to talk about uh, three principles that can make you a better person. And a lot of people say, oh, I'm a good person and, uh, and uh, I, I do good stuff, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I behave well, I'm, I'm a really good person. And uh, uh, I, I don't know about you, but I want to be a better person. That's one of the things, one of the treats of being a, a Christian, is that uh, we, we strive to be always better. We strive to be always more like Jesus. So that's what a Christian is. It's a person that is like Jesus. Are you like Jesus? Yes. Well, we kind of hesitate. Am I like Jesus? I don't know. <laughs> Am I that holy? That, that's our goal. And God knows everything. There's no problem that comes to you uh, that God doesn't know about it. It's, it's not without God's knowledge. And you might think, so why is He allowing these problems to come to me? Why is this happen to me, God? And sometimes we feel singled out and perhaps you feel that God is punishing you. But God is not punishing you. Be assured also that you're not alone. There's other people like you. And whatever you're going through, God promised that uh, He will see you through and give you the strength and direction you need. Now I'm going to read the passage for today, which is in the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 40. And I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, and it says, verse 35, On that same, same day, when he, evening had come, he said to them, Let us go over to the other side of the lake. And leaving the throng, they took with, uh, uh, him with them, just as he was, in the boat in, in which he was sitting. And other boats were sitting with him. And the furious storm wind of hurricane proportions. How many of you have seen the hurricanes uh, uh, in the United States? So th this is a wind of hurricane proportions. Arose and the waves kept beating into the boat. So that it was already becoming filled. But he himself was in the stern of the boat asleep on the leather cushion. And they awoke him and said to him, Master. Uh, and he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush now, be still. And the wind ceased, sank to rest as if exhausted by its beating. And there was immediately a great calm, a perfect peacefulness. And now I'm going to get to the, to the bottom line, to the verse that I want to share today, which is verse 40. And he said to them, Why are you so timid? And fearful how is it that you have no faith so here here's the, the the situation they're crossing from one side of the lake to the other side this was uh, the Lord's will to cross to the other side so they they're following God's will and they get the storm of hurricane proportions they, they get a, a huge storm right in the middle of the lake and as Jesus is asleep, they suddenly realize we're all going to die. And he is sleeping there in a leather cushion. So he's in a comfortable place like, just like you are here. So he's asleep. Why, why is he asleep? Because he knows that it's just the wind. Nothing could kill Jesus. I'm going to say it again. Nothing and no one could kill Jesus. Jesus. The reason why he died is because he gave himself. And here's Jesus. And right after this happens, instead of telling them a word of comfort, instead of telling you, oh, I'm sorry, I was asleep. Oh, poor you. Oh, uh, I, I'm, I feel so sorry that you, you feel hurt that, and abandoned. Instead of doing this, he has some kind of harsh words. Because he said, why are you so timid and fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And today I want to speak briefly about timidity. Timidity. Do you have timidity in, in areas of your life? Are you timid in God's things? You know, when I've met uh, my, my soon-to-be wife, uh, I had to overcome the timidity of speaking to her. I don't know when you were dating, if you spoke immediately to the one you love. Or if you were so timid and you, you were thinking, well, if I talk to her, uh, is she going to accept me? If I, if I approach her, uh, is she going to understand things right? But I love her so much. And eventually you had to overcome timidity because you had something in your heart that is called passion. Come on. Yeah. We need to have passion. And when we have passion for the Lord, something happens in our heart 
That's a, a, a multiplication of strength and power that is called faith. Faith. And in here it says on the Amplified, no firmly relying trust. So they had no trust in whom? They had no trust in themselves. It's not that they didn't trust Jesus. They trusted Jesus. That's why they went there and they, they awoke him. He was awake, but they had no trust. But the, I'm, I'm telling you that passion overcomes timidity. When you're passionate, you don't care about what other people are going to think. When you have passion, you can hire a guy to, to take an airplane with a stripe saying, I love you, Sarah. <laughs> and go around the city of Montreal. And you can hire and you can do stupid stuff because you're in love. You have passion. Now, these are the three things that will help you in order to overcome timidity and in order to succeed in any area of your life. First one is you need to know your level of timidity. You need to know yourself. Sometimes people are afraid to speak or they're afraid, afraid to speak in public. Maybe some of you, if I tell you, come here and grab the microphone, you say, oh, no, no, not me. Not me. I don't want to grab a microphone. Oh, come here and sing. Oh, no, no, no way. I sing in the shower. And, 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 and so there are different levels of, of timidity. We can have timidity uh, in our social life. So uh, some people, they're in a group of people and they're very shy. They don't talk. So we need to know who we are. And there's areas of timidity in our life. There's one area in which we shouldn't have timidity. It's in the things of God. Some people, they don't share their faith. Why? Because they're afraid. They have timidity. And this is a dangerous thing. But 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven and crying and fawning fear. Look at what the Amplified Bible says once again. So God didn't give us a spirit of what? Of? Timidity. Say it again. Timidity. timidity. So tell the person next to you, God didn't give me a spirit of timidity. Come on, you need to speak it. You need to tell it. You need to tell it in front of the mirror. You need to look into your face and say, God didn't give me, give me a spirit of timidity. But, I, I like when it says but. <laughs> but He has given us a spirit of power. Come on, let's say power. You can do better. Power! And of love and calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. So it's all these things, but it starts by power. So God didn't give us a spirit of timidity, but gives us a spirit of power. And these are reciprocal things. You know what's a reciprocal? A reciprocal, it's the exact opposite. It's the exact opposite. So the opposite of faith the opposite of, the God, of God's power, it's timidity. You know that churches today, they're behind closed doors and they're just worshiping God and they think they're doing a great thing. But one of the reasons they're behind closed doors, it's because of timidity. Amen. They're afraid to expose themselves. You know, the, the early church didn't have temples. They gathered in the movie theater. Well, they didn't have the movie theater. But, well, there in, the, in Greece, they had a place called the Areopagus. Areopagus. What a difficult name. What is the Areopagus? It was the movie theater at the time. It was where they had the, the plays and they, they had the, the Odyssey and those, all those plays from those great uh, Greek writers. What about in, in Rome? They met in places like the Portico. The Portico. What's the Portico? The same thing. It's where the politicians met to discuss their ideas. So churches were not in temples. They went sometimes to a synagogue or to another synagogue, but churches were outside. They were on the outside. Jesus preached on the outside. He gathered the crowds on the outside, on the mountain, on the lake, on the shore, on the boat, everywhere. Amen. And he was a friend of sinners. Yes. And here's the church today. And the church has been afraid. You know, the reason why we're here in this movie theater, it's more than not being willing to pay a, a huge mortgage. And that's also one of the reasons, because we don't have a mortgage, we can uh, uh, use the money we have, or that we will have, you know, in, in order to reach people, and we will invest in the kingdom of God. Amen. And we can keep growing and growing. There's excellent venues in Montreal to have church, come on. <laughs> and this is a great one. 
So this is our home church and it will be till God wants us to go to a bigger place. But listen, God didn't give us a spirit of timidity. Timidity is related to fear. And some people are on the highway to hell. Amen. You know that song by ACDC, Highway to Hell? When I was a kid, I, I used to like this song. Well, I like the, the, the chords because they kind of make us, you know. But then I, I started to sing without knowing what I was singing. But let me tell you, when we're going on the wrong road, I, I personally have, have a GPS on my cell phone. Uh, but maybe you have a GPS and you want to arrive to a destination and you punch the GPS, you take the wrong road, what does the lady say? Recalculating. <laughs> Make a U-turn whenever you can. Right? So, and, and, and sometimes you say, nah, nah, I'm taking this road. But people are on the highway to hell. And God is telling them not make a U-turn because when you're on the highway, you cannot make a U-turn. The lady says something different. She says, no, no, no. Take the next exit. Take the next exit because we need to go around and move in the opposite way. So let me tell you today, if you have a spirit of timidity, if you're just bound by fear, God is telling you today, take the next exit. That's why you're here. This is the exit. God is giving you the exit because He didn't give you a spirit of timidity, but He, he gives you a spirit of power. Come on. Let's take the, the GPS, the spiritual GPS. Now, second thing. First, recognize your level of timidity. Change into a better you. Can you see this picture? Which one looks uh, prettier? It's the same. It's the same lady. Just one is crying and the other one is not. It's, she has good makeup. But it's the same person. It's two different pictures. Now, why do we find sometimes people uh, uh, ugly? Have you ever seen ugly, uh, an ugly person? Yes. No? Oh, come on. <laughs> sometimes you look to a person and say, oh, who are you? Oh, my God. Thank you, God, I wasn't born like you. <laughs> You don't say it, but you, you think it. <laughs> you never thought about this? Come on. Ah, well, that's why we're not in church. We can say these things. And most, most people, they're not ugly. But they put an ugly face. It's the expression. It's the attitude. Because if they change expression, suddenly they're not ugly anymore. No, they're beautiful. You know, there's that, that story of, of the man, and this is not a Christian story. It's, it's a man that, that had a shipwreck and, and he was in a desert island. And there in the desert island, he had plenty of time and he found some things from the pirates. And there was a lamp and he uh, rubbed the lamp and the genie came out of the lamp. I told you it's not a Christian story. Just a story. And, and the genie said, you can have three wishes. And he said, oh, I, I want ice. I want ice. I want a fridge with ice. And pff, there was a fridge with ice. Then he thought about, it. well, I want a mansion here in the desert island. And the, the genie said, it's your wish. And he had this beautiful mansion. And then he said, I want the most beautiful woman in the world here with me. And the genie said, here's our wish. And Mother Teresa just showed up. <laughs> Come on, we can laugh. <laughs> I told you it's not. <laughs> It's not a, a Christian joke, it's just, just a story. She was beautiful, that woman. That little woman, Mother Teresa, she was beautiful. She was a beautiful woman. But if you just focused on her appearance, you would say, oh my gosh, you need to go to extreme makeover, extreme edition. You know, you need something. But, but people found her beautiful. Why? Because what she had inside just showed up in her face. Now, how can you change into a, a better you? You can change the way you look just by smiling. Come on, smile at me. <laughs> Show me your teeth. <laughs> just smile. Just try to, to make visual contact with people. These are things that will help you to overcome timidity. Have you seen those people that are so shy? They're you know, always looking down. Have you ever met a person that doesn't look you in the eye? There's no eye contact. You're talking to them and they're you know, just... 
it's sometimes even embarrassing. If you're that kind of person, you need to make your personal effort to change. Just try smiling. Just decide today to walk with confidence. You know, Christians should walk, you know, looking up. Unless you're trying to find money in the, in the, in the you know, <laughs> in the sidewalk. But you should, you know, just straighten up your, your posture. You know, walk like a king, like a queen. Walk in a different way. You know, when you show up to a place, it's not that you want to be the center uh, of that place, but you show up with confidence. And you need to, to understand this. And, and, you know, people say, fake it till you make it. Now, I'm not telling you to be a fake. I'm not telling you to be a fake. But, uh, but if, if there's anything that you need to do sometimes in life, it's to put your act together. So an act, it's when you act. So even if you don't feel like smiling, just smile. Are you having a bad day at, at the work? You know, instead of having that, that face, you know, always complaining, you know, start praising God. Start do, doing different things. Change your attitude. Even if you, you don't feel like talking to others, practice. Practice. You know, in a place like this, when we say we're going to have a five-minute break, try to find a person that you don't know, go there and introduce yourself. That's what we should do in church. You know, free yourself talking to someone. Feel free to talk it out loud. Change the way you look. You know, if you're always, you know, uh, wearing dark clothes and, uh, and, uh, and you look terrible, you know, maybe you need some advice. Who knows? <laughs> but, but change the way you look. Try a, a brighter, uh, uh, you know, outfit. Try something. Change. You know, if you're, if you're aging, like, like uh, most of us, you're all aging. You know, try to dress a little bit younger. What, right? You know, I used to go to, to churches and I, I started to go to church in the 80s, but people dressed like in the 60s. Uh -huh. That's right. So we, we have to change this. You know, that's one of the reasons where, where you'll not see me very often with a tie. But you'll see me with a tie. But, but if you see how the prime minister dresses, the prime minister doesn't wear a tie anymore. But people are still living in the past and, uh, you know, this is not just for, for ladies, just, it's also for you guys. You know, you can change the way you look and this will give you a different level of confidence. Because if you want to overcome timidity, it has to start on the inside. And you cannot overcome timidity in the spirit if you don't learn to overcome timidity in the natural. But above all, focus your attention outward. Not on yourself. And I want to share this verse. John 16, 13, Jesus said, When He, the Spirit of truth, uh, is come. Who's the Spirit of truth? The Holy, Spirit. the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth, for He shall not speak of Himself. So the Holy Spirit doesn't speak of Himself. Why should you? Amen. Huh? Is that a good question? Yes. Do you know those people, they're always talking about themselves? You know, I, I love listening to, to evangelists preaching. I like to be an evangelist. But I, I, I learned that when I'm an evangelist, it's not to speak about myself. You know, I did this and I did that and I did a crusade and these people were saved. And, uh, and uh, you know, they, and they count the legs of the chairs and they, and instead of the heads of the people. And they exaggerate all things in order to, you know, to make them feel good and talk about themselves. So in all areas of life, if you're around a table and you have a person just talking about themselves, inside sometimes you think, who cares? Who cares, you know, if, if, uh, if, uh, uh, you know if, if your cat is feeling bad? You know, who cares if your dog is shedding? You know, talk about something else. You know, and, and as Christians, instead of just talking about ourselves, me, 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 my problems, why don't you start talking about what God is doing in you? Yes. Isn't that great? Yeah. You know, you, you talk about other stuff. In, and uh, and uh, you, you can change this by just approaching someone and, and you, you just tell them, Oh, Wendy, what a nice blouse. Where did you bought this? I want one. <laughs> well, I won't uh, do this with you, but this is just an example. <laughs> but just, just give a compliment to people. You know, change the focus from you to the outside, to others. If the spirit of truth doesn't speak about himself, why should we? Last thing, and I'm finishing. So the first thing, you need to learn what is your level of timidity. 
Second thing, you need to start to operate a change in your life and it has to be at all levels. And third thing, boost your faith with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, faith and boldness walk together. When you read the Bible, the disciples were timid. But as, as they walk with Jesus, it wasn't immediate, but it was step by step. Jesus told them, you know, go two by two, go, go, go here, go there. And then finally, when he ascended to heaven, he gave them the power of the Holy Ghost. So they could overcome all problems. Now, the last uh, uh, chapters of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, I want just to read this scripture so you'll understand the importance of overcoming timidity. And it says, And he further said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Who's speaking? Jesus. Jesus is. The beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without price from the fountain of the water of life. He who is victorious shall inherit all these things. And I will be God to him and he shall be my son. How many of you want to go to heaven? How many of you want to be victorious? Now let me tell you. You need to be victorious here, not in heaven. You will be victorious in heaven, that's for sure. But the way for victory, it's right here. So we all, well, we all have our trials, our tribulations, our struggles. You know, our shortcomings, our problems, you know, our mountains to overcome, the storms of life. We all have these things. And God equipped you to be victorious. victorious. Can you say victorious? victorious? Victorious. You're the victor, you're not the victim. And then he says, but for the cowards, ig uh, ign ignoble and the contemptible, this is a difficult word for me, cravenly lacking in courage and the cowardly submissive, and as for the unbelieving and faithless and depraved and all this, you can read the list. What is this talking about? The timid. You know the French translation, I believe it says the timid. Les timides. So, so in English we have different words for the same concept. Timidity will place you out of heaven. Listen very carefully. Because some people take it for granted. They think they go to a, 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 a place, they lift their hand, they do a prayer to accept Jesus. Now they're saved, that's it. It's not it. It's not it. You have a battle and you were called by God to be victorious. Amen. You will be always victorious in Christ, but you need to do something which is overcome the timidity. Some, uh, some lack timidity and, and they don't have faith, but you need to, have, to let your faith be bigger than your fears. So the way to overcome timidity is to use your faith. And you need passion. You need to renovate passion. You know, it's so hard to resist someone who is head over heels in love with you. And there's this story about a lady that went to visit a friend and, and there was a litter of kittens and one kitten just jumped into her lap and, and you know how kittens do, start looking to her with eyes, adorable eyes like this. And when it was time to go, the kitten came and just started to rub, you know, and the lady finally said, I have to take you. I have to take you. And, uh, and, uh, and, and the lady sh chose that kitten over all the other ones that were there in the, in the, in the house because that kitten showed something, showed love. We are God's kittens. <clears throat> God is expecting us, <clears throat> excuse me, just to show love to Him. Just to say, God, I just love you. I worship you. I'll do anything. You know, I'll wake up early on Sunday and I'll go to church instead of staying home and watching TV. I, you know, I'll do something for you. I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll go whatever you tell me to go. Lord, you want me to share? You want me to go to those connect groups and share the gospel? Bring someone. I'll go. I just love you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for what you've, you've done uh, in my life. I'm, I'm so thankful. And we're just like that little kitten. <laughs> And God will just grab us in His arms and comfort us. Psalm 18.32. He talks about the God who equipped me with strength and made my way blameless. He equipped me with what? With strength. So it's not too late. 
maybe you could start even today. The GPS is telling you exit now. And Acts 1.8, it says, but you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So if you lack passion, maybe you, you lack the Holy Ghost. Maybe that's the problem. You see, P Peter was a great man of God. He did great things, but he denied Jesus. He wasn't able to follow Jesus. He was too shy. When people came to him and said, you are one of them, he said, who, me? No, you, you, you're confusing me with somebody else. It's not me. It's not me. No, no, it's not me. And he started even to swear. Why? Timidity. Timidity. But something happens when the Holy Ghost came, and that's the next chapter, Acts chapter 2. The Holy Ghost came upon them. And Peter stood, and in that day, he preached a message that converted 3,000 people. 3,000 people. Look at what God can do when one timid receives the Holy Spirit. Amen. He had the doctrine, he knew what to do, but he wasn't able to do it. He was more interested in fishing. But when the Holy Spirit came, power came into his life. And let me tell you today, I want to pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. Yes. Amen? Yes. Because I cannot change the other things we talked about. I cannot force you to introduce yourself to a person. I just can tell you it's good for you. I shouldn't go and, and tell you what to wear or what not to wear. Though some people, I, I shouldn't, uh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> huh? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But, you know, some people need some help. Come on, ladies. Do you know any of your friends that need some help? Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they go to work and you say, you say, oh, my God, look at the way she looks today. Oh, God, I should say something. But you, you don't want to embarrass yourself or, or her. You know what, I, what I'm saying? Yeah. So this I cannot do. I can talk about it like I did on my point too. But one thing I can do, and that's what we're going to do today. I can pray that God will fill you and baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And as that happens, imagine what this group of people will do with the power of the Holy Spirit. If one timid brought 3,000 to the Lord, how many can you bring to the Lord? How many people would you like to bring to the Lord? Come on, say a number. 5,000. Oh, that's good. Just you? I'm counting on you, Sandra. I'm putting all... <laughs> I'm counting on you. You know, you, you need to think about it. Think about it. You know, some people just think about money and other stuff. Think about this. Because it's good to have money. It's good to have all these things. But when the power of the Holy Ghost comes, everything changes. Let us all stand.